happy uh, new month and happy second half of the year amen happy third quarter there's a lot of happiness amen guys it's been half of the year already it seemed like yesterday when the year started didn't it we're shouting happy new year amen and half is already gone amen praise jesus hallelujah um i want you to look at someone close to you and tell the person congratulations so you made it this far you will finish it i want to also be quick to thank every one of you for your immense contribution for the success of our picnic amen hallelujah who who enjoyed the picnic i did amen i don't know about you i had a good time amen <laughs> well, before the summer finishes, right? Uh, we are really thankful to God, and I, I really appreciate all of your cooperations. Amen. Uh, that is just one of the many of our unusual services that we will have. By God's grace, we'll get better at it. It was our first. We'll get better, and we'll get bigger by God's grace. Amen. We'll try to incorporate evang evangelistic efforts also into into them where and when necessary. Um. Thanks for the foods, the drinks, the everything. Every one of you, you are appreciated. I had loads of fun. I ate well. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I gained some weight. <laughs> Hallelujah from just that occasion. And I'm grateful to God. It's important. It's important um, to be able to mingle outside of church environment. Uh, most times we only cross paths inside, inside church for a few moments. So we look forward to the ones that we'll have still. Um, hopefully next time we can do something, uh, by God's grace, a bit more indoor that is also fun. We're looking forward to that, uh, by God's grace. We'll keep you posted. Hallelujah. About testimony, I always wish sometimes when they ask for testimony, I can just come and just give testimonies, you know, right there, you know, like everyone else. But because of time management, I have to wait till when it's my turn to come up here so I can testify. I want to testify of God's goodness. Amen. Um, God has been good to me. Praise the Lord. Very good to me, actually. Um, he has come through in ways unimaginable. Um, I'm happy to see what he's doing. Health restoration, especially. Um, you never know how important health is until you become sick. Amen. It can affect every area of your life. Everything. So I'm very grateful to God for health restoration um and i really want to encourage every one of us to adopt lifestyles healthy lifestyles that can avoid sicknesses and diseases amen um, believe me it's not the place you want to be it is true god is a healer um but it's better to not be sick at all amen i know it feels nice every time when a person comes to church in front of church and wants to testify testify that god has healed them Maybe you feel left out. Believe me, you are not being left out. Praise God. Stay healthy. Praise God. Stay healthy. You are not being left out. Be happy and do everything you have to do to stay healthy. Okay? Watch what you eat. Watch what you drink. You know? Uh, watch what you expose yourself to that could affect your health. These are just some things. Uh, for me, I've seen God's goodness in that regard. And in many other ways, uh, which I am I, I, very... Um, the last couple of days, stroke weeks, were really a bit tough. Um, not because they were just tough, tough, but because something was in the works and in progress. And I'm happy to say that a lot of progress have been made. I'm at a place of peace. Amen. Praise God. Prosperity comes better when you are in a state of peace. Tell your neighbor, prosperity comes when there is peace. One of the reasons Solomon blossomed was because there was peace unlike his father. I say this to say, please don't do anything that will take away your peace. Am I talking to somebody right now? As much as possible, avoid it. Now, some are unavoidable. Sometimes your peace has to be temporarily shaken, you know, um, or at least threatened before you see the progress that you, are, that you want. But if it is possible, if it's up to you, whatever will not allow you have peace. Avoid it because it may affect your prosperity. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe, God, that as we all experience peace, we will see more prosperity in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, happy Canada Day. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Happy Canada Day, my fellow Canadians. Um, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, tell your neighbor, happy, happy Canada Day, my fellow Canadian. Amen. The Bible says, faith calls the things that be not as though they were. Amen. With the works, it, it's in the works. Amen. Before Abraham had a child, he called himself a father of many nations. Amen. Um, before you become a Canadian, you need to call yourself a Canadian. Praise God. Don't worry, you will not be sued, you will not be punished, you will not be penalized. Amen. You just tell them it was by faith. Amen. Today, we want to conclude on our faith series before we move into what God has in store for us for the month. Um, it's important that we finish it because, um, la of course, last Sunday we did, a, we couldn't have, you know, anything. So we just used this Sunday to wrap up and then we enter into the new month. For the month of July, God has spoken to us and he says it's a month of God can. Tell anybody about God can. Say God can. God can do it for you and your house in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we begin to question God. Can God do this thing? Amen. Can God make me happy? You know, can God settle me? You know, can God give me uh, what I want? You know, the answer is God can. Amen. God can heal you. God can save you. God can um, change testimonies. God can change things from how they are, no matter how bad it is or seems right now. God can. Believe me, take it from me. I know he can. Praise the Lord. I know he can. I know he can. Praise the Lord. Sometimes life gets really tough. Sometimes you suffer. Sometimes you lose things that um, you consider important to you. For example, take health. A man may lose his health. And you begin to question, can God restore? Can God restore? Something like someone like Job, for example, after losing your children, after losing your business, after losing your investments, after losing your houses, after losing your servant, after losing all the monies that he had, after losing all of his cattle, can God restore? Amen. Somebody say God can. Amen. God can restore. God can restore. Amen. The Bible says the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm has eaten, it says the Lord will restore it. The Lord will restore it. So that the next time you're feeling down and feeling like, oh, ah, a lot has gone wrong. Listen, God can. Amen. I want to encourage you to please take a look at the message from yesterday tonight, um, the global service we had. Um, very crucial and important one where we threw some light on what God can do. Amen. Tell your neighbor, God is preparing something for you. God is preparing something for you. Say, hang in there. Don't give up. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I don't know if there are people, but I think most of the people here, even the guys cook. Amen. You know you can decide to want to cook. You are very hungry. You, want, you are very hungry and you want to cook. But, you know, you don't just start cooking sometimes. Why? Because there may be something in the pot you want to use. Hallelujah. And so sometimes you have to start first from cleaning the pot. Amen. And that means an extra time. Sometimes that little delay that you call a delay in the blessing coming is actually because God is preparing something for you. I just want to encourage somebody who may feel like things are taking too long. God has not left you. Amen. God has not abandoned you. He's preparing something. Okay? He's preparing something for you. Today, to help us, we are going to go to the book of Hebrews as we finish on faith, the acts of faith. Praise the Lord. The acts of faith. Amen. Hebrews 11 will begin from verse 11, where we left off the last time. Hebrews 11 from verse 11. I want to encourage somebody, firstly, by explaining what faith is. Faith is confidence. Amen. Faith is what? Confidence. Praise God. Faith is having confidence about something that, that is still to come. Hallelujah. So that thing has not come yet, but you are confident about it. It is, uh, it is what you say or do now 
in confidence about what is still to come. So my question to you is, what are you confident about? Every story we are going to look at today is to help you come to a place of confidence. Are you confident about your tomorrow in Canada? Are you confident tomorrow? Um, are you confident today about your tomorrow when it comes to your finances? Even though you don't have money in your bank account, but is there confidence, is there faith that things will get better? Hallelujah. So we're going to look at what faith says. Amen. In the life of, for example, our, our mother, um, Sarah, Hebrews 11, verse 11, the Bible says, through faith, Sarah received strength to conceive. Amen. She received what? Strength to conceive seed. Now, I want you to know that this is different from the strength to keep the baby. When the woman is already pregnant, you say, okay, now, oh, I'm weak, oh, you know, I don't know if I'll be able to carry this baby to, to term. That's not it. She received the power to conceive a seed. Even though she was way past the age. So I want to speak to us right now. What is that thing that is looking difficult, demanding? On you and on your future. That looks like you are not capable. Because if we went by capabilities, Sarah was not capable. Hello? She had gone past the age. She had made so, so to say, she had, she had lost time. Because sometimes you may begin to look at yourself, you know, oh, I wish I was still younger. You know? I wish I studied this in school. I wish I read this course. I wish I knew how to do this. Listen to me. Faith is that thing that helps you remove any concept of lateness. Amen. It is that thing that helps you to catch up. By faith, you can receive something. You can receive the strength to do it as though you are still young. Am I talking to somebody now? Amen. So Sarah received strength to conceive something. What is that thing you would like to conceive yourself now? Maybe you want to conceive a business idea. Hallelujah. You want to start a business. You can. You can. God is telling you in this moment, I can. Amen. I can. You can have a great marriage. Amen. You can. You can have great kids. Hallelujah. You can raise your children well by faith. Amen. Somebody say by faith. By faith. Praise Jesus. If you think of, if you think of the situation in, in Sodom and Gomorrah, amen, um, as the Bible describes it, there was obviously some toughness with raising the children there. But guess what? Um, Lot was still able to raise his children to be different from the children in that environment. Am I talking to somebody? Do you know how he did it? By faith. Amen. By faith. By faith, it is possible for you to be different. Am I speaking to somebody right now? It's possible for you to be different. Regardless of what, what is common with everybody. Hallelujah. He said, through faith, Sarah received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past the age. Do you see that? When you say she, when she was late, but she still could deliver. Amen. Tell, look at your neighbor and help me prophesy to them. Say, you will deliver. Say, you will deliver. You will deliver. Amen. Yes, you will. Don't think that it's late. It's not late. Amen. You can catch up. You can pursue. You can overtake. Amen. 
It doesn't matter who start, started first. You will pursue, you will overtake, and you will prevail. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Don't give up on you. Don't give up on you. I know life is tough. We all feel it. But don't give up on you. Praise God. Remember, she was there till Sarah felt it. Do you know what it's like to live in the 30s, your mates are already married. 40s, your mates are already, everybody already have children. By 50s, people are already having grandchildren. 60s, some are already having great grandchildren. 70s, 80s, you don't have children of your own. Then God shows up at 90 and says, you have a child. 90, I will have a child, no grandchild, no great grandchild. I don't, just let me die, let me go. That's what people will say. My own is finished, you know? Well, how long will I not be with my child? It's not late, brother. Amen. Tell anyone it's not late. Amen. Even though she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. That's the thing. We have to realize that God is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should what? Repent. God cannot and will not fail you. God did not bring you this far just to abandon you. Am I talking to somebody now? He will not. Just hang in there with him and for him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, just imagine someone like, say, Mr. Solomon now with his kids, and he tells his kids, I'll come pick you from school. Amen. I'll come pick you for school, from school. He will make sure to come pick them. You know, how would it feel if the child then left and said, I didn't think, I wasn't sure you were coming? You feel hot. What do you mean? It's my responsibility. So even if I'm not able to come, I'll send someone. I'll make arrangements, but you have to pick up. I can't just leave you there. I can't abandon you there. Amen. But that's how it is with us sometimes, and we forget. We think like when God says something, he doesn't mean it. We find a way to excuse it. Amen. But God is saying, I'll come through for you. Amen. I sent you there, I'll keep you, amen. I'll take care of you, I'll provide for you, amen. I sent you to earth, therefore I have everything planned for you. Am I talking to somebody now? Hallelujah. Look at it, verse 11, verse 12. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in, the mul in multitude. And the sun, which is by the, by the seashore, innumerable. Hallelujah. You see that? From that one person became many. One child. Amen. Praise God. Faith does wonders. Faith what? Faith does wonders. Faith does wonders. Praise Jesus. I'm so excited. Amen. You know, faith is so powerful. You know, in those days in Africa, one of the reasons people had many children was because, you know, anything could happen to any of them. So they wanted to don't take chance, you know. So at least, you know, have several. So that in case anything happened to one, at least you will still have at least one remaining. You see, that's, that's an approach of fear. But imagine God tell you one. <laughs> and all your life, this is the one, the child of promise. That one Isaac. In Isaac, the next from one became two twins, Esau and Jacob. From the two, you know, this one had 12 alone. Come on. Nothing happened to them along the way. Why? Because these were children of faith. Faith will keep you. Am I talking to somebody right now? Faith will keep you. It's, it's like when God tells you, okay, take this job, one job. I'm like, oh, no, maybe I should have five jobs. And God is like, no, take this job. It's this job. It's not in the many jobs. Amen. Sometimes it's in that one correct right job. I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody right now. Amen. Sometimes it is in that one right correct job. That takes care of everything else. May God help us to stay in faith and not walk by fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 17. 
Hebrews 11 from verse 17. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up what? Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Now, that same particular son, the only son you liked, the only son that God promised and gave, it then comes to you and says, sacrifice him. What a man of faith he was. At times when God tests you, when God questions you, when God asks you to see who's, who, who do you have faith in, when God tells you, leave this thing for me. Amen. The Bible says, Abraham, without question, offered up his son by faith. And the Bible explains to us why he did that. Amen. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, he accounted that God was able to raise him up. Hallelujah. So he had faith that God could raise him. So the reason he was agreeing with the plan to let his son die, to sacrifice his son was because he believed God can raise him. Can I speak to somebody now? We need to have faith. That no matter what, God will not let us be put to shame. I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody right now. So that when you are faced with hard decisions, which we will be faced many times, don't be afraid to take it. Hello? It's like the Hebrew boys. They say, fall down, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They say, fall down and, and you know, and worship this idol. They said, no, we are not going to. For our God is able to deliver us. And even if he doesn't, we still will not. Guess what? God came through. Amen. God came through. God will come through for us. God will come through for you. Amen. Don't be afraid. I have to say this because we will often face situations where we will be tested. You'll be tried. It may happen at work. Amen. Amen. It may happen in your studies. It may happen amongst your friends. Don't be afraid to take the right one. God will come through. Do you know what it means to <laughs> say, sacrifice your child? It's not like you have to, you know? If you have to, you begin to say, okay, maybe this one, you know, the other one will come through. You know, God will keep this one. No, it's one. The one whom you love, the one of whom they say the promise is on his head. And he says, sacrifice him. Just think about it. Just, just think about it. Let it sink. I don't want to talk about, just imagine yourself right now as a child and then your own biological father one day we had to take you to go and sacrifice you. In Africa, people are very familiar with ritual. Amen. <laughs> This one is godly ritual. He was to take you to go and do godly ritual, for example. That's what happened with Isaac. And you have to realize Isaac was not a child at this time. He was conscious of what the father is doing. He asked questions. And he did not even resist. In our world today, they will say trauma. <laughs> you know, now the boy was very tra must have been traumatized. How did he live with such amount of trauma? Isaac himself was a person of faith. He had faith in his father, and he had faith in the, in the God of his father. I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody. He did not resist. He did not fight. He did not attack his father, saying, you old man, what are you trying to do with my life? Amen. Abraham, he accounted that God, amen, are you there now? Verse nine, I'm now in 19. He accounted that God was able to raise him up. Hello? Somebody say faith. This is the first time in the entire Bible. You know, it's different if we had seen it before, where you say resurrection of life. Abraham was the first person to believe in resurrection before Jesus even came. Today, it's easy for someone if they tell you, okay, oh, we want to bring him back to life because we have seen several accounts in the Bible. But in Abraham's time, there was no case of somebody died and you brought him back to life. But Abraham, faith made him believe. So me, I believe. I believe. 
It's important that we start letting faith speak through us. I believe things will get better. Amen. I believe that God will keep me. I believe God will keep my house. I believe this nation will bring good things for me. Amen. That's what faith says. Faith, faith has confidence about what is to come. I don't know how, but it will, it will have to play out. I don't know how, but it will have to play out. Hallelujah. Amen. Bishop David Oedipo says, when the ministry just started, the ministry, in quotes, we are broke. He used to live in the church property there, you know, where himself and his wife and their first baby then, they would, you know, they, they were almost literally exposed. There's an account and a saying of someone who uh, came to church one early morning when the wife was still getting ready. So, to a basic level, one man came one time to church, says, uh, Pastor, Pastor, um, how can we help you? In a mocking and a nice way. And the man of God, Bishop David Oweipo, responded, I said, I said, he said, if you are not blind, you will see that what? I, I, you, I'm, I'm not in need of your help. It's you who need my help. What does that mean? He was walking in faith. And you hear him speak today. He says something. He says, he says, I'm not surprised about where we are now. I would have been surprised if we were not here. So the faith, even though at that moment it seemed as if nothing was working, there was confidence that he would get to where he is today. Hallelujah. I want to say this to you. You must have heard it before said, be it unto you according to your faith. Focus on building your faith because it shall happen to you the way you believe. Am I talking to somebody now? What do you have faith for? What do you have faith for now? Hallelujah. What do you have what? Faith for now. Praise Jesus. What do you have faith for now? It may help you sometimes to make a list. Just check it. What are the things? What do I have faith for? Or what should I get faith for? I have faith. I would have a great marriage. I have faith that I have great kids. I have faith that I have a good job. I have faith that I have many properties. I have faith. Amen. I have those faith. I'll graduate in time. Amen. I have faith that my parents will live long to enjoy all of the blessings of God in my life. Faith. Remember, the Bible says, through faith, the elders, they received a good report. Amen. Look at what the Bible says here in verse um, 20. Okay, okay, let's finish verse 19. It says, he believed that God was able to raise him even from the dead. From whence also he received him in a figure. You see that? The man had, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. May God help us. What a man that man was. God bless Father Abraham. Amen. You know, there's something about this man, Abraham, that, you know, if, if you really take time to study him, you realize this man was a different person. Many of the things that happened, happened in his life for the first time. You know, it's easy for us to do things today because someone else has done it. But for him, it was the first time. Take, for example, tithing. If you study the account of tithing in the Bible, you understand that Abraham was the first person to start it. There was no place he read a book or anything or somebody said it. He took a step by faith. Why God does not joke with someone like him? Amen. He didn't have someone who said, okay, oh, there was a pastor before me or a priest before me or something. No. He, st he, he, was, a, he, was, a, he was an institutor. If you look at this again now. Never had there been resurrection from the dead. How do you believe in resurrection from the dead if there was no example of resurrection from the dead? I don't, I don't know if someone is feeling well feeling. Never done before. Never heard before. Never read from any book before. 
and you just believe that God can raise someone from the dead. Why? Because faith believes all things are possible. Hallelujah. Faith does what? All things. Not some things. All things. All things. All things are possible. Some years ago, men never believed they could, be in the, they could ever reach the moon. Until man landed on the moon. A person believed that it was possible. You can be great. Amen? You can be great. You can be very great. Hallelujah. Whew. Verse 20. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. How do we bless people? By faith. Amen. Hello? How do I bless my house? By faith. You, you put hands on the house, on the walls of the house, you bless it. Amen. How do I bless my children? By faith. Call them. Look at it. It says, Isaac blessed his children, Esau and Jacob, by faith. You bless them. You must engage faith. It's not just talking. You must engage faith to release the blessing. When you say you are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ, you must let the confidence. You remember that? Faith is confidence about something that is still to happen. So you must let there be that you are saying it with confidence that you know these children will turn out right. Hallelujah. You know these children will turn out right. By faith, Isaac blessed um, Jacob and Esau about things to come. By faith, Jacob also, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. Hallelujah. By faith, he blessed. How do we bless? By faith. Amen. How do I bless myself even? How do I bless my spouse? By faith. Say, God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God make you happy. Hallelujah. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them before they even come. Bless the children before they even come. Bless your husband or your wife before he even comes. Bless him. Bless him. You are blessed wherever you are. Amen. Praise God. You are blessed wherever you are. Hallelujah. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his what? His bones. Look at this. Faith helps you to prophesy. Joseph, at the time he was dying, None of the problems that they were having had started happening that they later had. But he knew that a day would come when they would leave that land. Why? He had faith on the promises of God. He knew one day you will leave this place. I don't know how long you are going to be in this place, but one day you will live here. So he gave a prophecy and told them what to do when they are living. Confidence. Amen. Confidence. Hallelujah. It's just like, just imagine, uh, let's say Mr. Solomon calling one of his sons one day and telling them, you know, the following words. Let it sink. He said, my son, in the day we'll be relocating to Mars. Okay? Make sure you put this flag there. Ah, we are not even, why are we going to Mars? Amen. There's nothing wrong with earth right now, is it? Amen. That's what it was. Joseph is talking about the day they leave Egypt, even though they were having a great time in Egypt. But faith made him to see already what was to come. I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody now. Okay. Faith has confidence about tomorrow. Faith sees. It knows what is to come. Hallelujah. Speak by faith, brothers and sisters. Talk to your friends by faith. Talk to your, um, your, your, your partner by faith. Your lovers by faith. Amen. Speak to, you know, it's, it's, listen to me. Because when there is no faith, people, the Bible says, they cast off restraint. 
people are confused. People are doubtful. People are afraid. They don't know what will happen. They don't know what will happen. But when you are confident, sometimes people can stand on your own faith. Don't, don't, don't you be the one not having faith? Take, for example, when Paul, the apostle Paul, when they were at sea and they were facing a storm and people were so scared, they wanted to start throwing people out of the, out of the, um, out of the ship. It was his faith that kept them. He told them, don't worry, nobody will die. Don't worry. They didn't even want to eat for days. The Bible said they did not eat. He told them, don't worry. We will lose some properties, but you will all be alive. Eat, we'll be fine. Now, these ones were afraid, but the faith of Paul kept them going. I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody now. Faith. Sometimes our families have doubts. They don't know. Are you sure you should go to that country? I don't know. I don't know I'm going to sustain you. We don't have enough money. You know I'm retiring next year or next two years. Amen. And, and, and then you, don't worry. Don't worry. God got this. Amen. Hallelujah. The confidence. Now they can rely on your own faith because they don't have the faith. They don't know. They can't see. They have limitations based on their perspective. But your assurance. Amen. Faith, the Bible says, is assurance. Of things not seen. The assurance. Hallelujah. You have to assure them. And reassure them. Say, Mama, don't worry. Hallelujah. Don't worry. Praise God. God will not put us to shame. Hallelujah. Say, God will not put me to shame. God will not put me to shame. Hallelujah. In verse 23, the Bible says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Amen. Three months. When he was born, they knew this child is different. Hallelujah. Children are different. Amen. They looked at him. They said, uh-uh. Let, we can risk everything. We can risk our life for this child. Sometimes, let me say this to somebody, because um, if we don't have faith, you live only in the moment. But some things are worth gold if you can see with the eyes of faith. Praise God. Three months. How do you appreciate something of three months? Amen. I mean, it's not like it's, it's, not like he's a grown tall guy. It's not like he's now the, the so to say, the... Uh, the prince of Egypt, he was not that yet. He was just an ordinary child. You know, there are some three-month-old relationships that should, be, that should be treasured. Amen. I'm asking you somebody. There are certain people you meet for a short time. That short, that thing, even though it looks as if it is small, you should value it. Because that small thing can become great. By faith, they saw it was worth risking on, taking a risk on. Amen. Sometimes we, we, we want to, oh, no, 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 no. The angel you know is better than the devil. You know, the, the, the devil you know is better than the angel you don't know. People say such things like that. You don't understand. Amen. So no, but I've known him for a long time, so he's better. No, you missed the point. A three-month-old child comes into the picture and they look at him. They say, no, you see this child is worth everything. This child is the deliverance for the entire family. This child is the deliverance for the entire nation. Their faith helps you to appreciate little things. Amen. It helps you to appreciate that little $300. Amen. Praise God. A great man who they tell you they are founded when they started business. They are, the capital they had, they tell you, you can't believe it. A man running a trillion dollar company tell you when he started, he started with $100. $100. The same $100 that one can blow at once in, a, what do they call it? Um, one restaurant here. Yeah, 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 this is important. You know, there's, a, there's, there's someone in the world today who if they get $100, it will change their whole life. They are just looking for $100. And there is another who has $100. And to him, it's not enough. Amen. 
May God help us by faith to appreciate the little. It's very important, believe me. Faith helps to magnify the little. You know what the Bible says? When the Bible says, it says, it says, it says if you have faith like a mustard seed, mustard seed small and little, it says, you will say to this mountain, be removed and be cast to the seas and it will. Now, that small thing, that little, little three-month-old child would later move the whole of Egypt. That little $200 can move mountain. Amen. Don't give up. Amen. Don't what? Don't give up. Don't give up. I saw somewhere online, I think, um, I didn't really follow the story fully, but I think uh, about four weeks ago, one of these um, young boys who had, um, I think, about 100 or $200 and converted it to several millions because of investing into buying one cryptocurrency. In a short time, $200 to several millions of dollars. That same two hundred dollars. Somebody, you just have like, what is it? What is this? What is this? Faith. It takes faith for you to even take such a step and say, okay, you know what? Maybe let's see what will become of this. Of course, they have their risks. Don't, 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 uh, don't be, don't be overly excited. Lots of people have suffered losses from such things too. But faith is that thing that puts puts. That makes you let things, put things out there with hope. That's why the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things what not seen. I've not seen it yet. I don't know what will happen. I don't know the outcome, but I have confidence. Amen. Praise God. I have confidence. Amen. I have confidence. Hallelujah. Your confidence will not be put to shame. Your confidence will not be put to shame. He said, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. They saw he was a proper child. You see that? When you have faith, it helps you appreciate things and helps you to not be afraid of things. Amen. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Amen. I'm not afraid. Things will turn out right. Praise God. Things will turn out right. Because sometimes one of the things that stops us is fear. We're afraid. What if it doesn't work? What if things turn out like this? What if things turn out like this? Amen. Let go of your fear. Pick up your faith. Hallelujah. Pick up your faith. What if things do work? Amen. Praise God. What if things do work? What if things do work? Verse 24, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Amen. Is there something you have been called for a long time that you do not like? You can refuse it by faith. Amen. Are you hearing this? They say you are not good enough. You can refuse it. You can refuse it. They say you are poor. You can refuse it. It doesn't matter how long that name has been with you. You've been called sick. You can refuse it by faith. He said by faith. When he came of age, he refused to be called the son, uh, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You can change your name. You can change your, your narrative. Amen. They call you broke. You say, I'm not broke. Amen. By faith. He chose to no longer associate himself with, 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 with um, Pharaoh. Let me say this to everybody. There's a time in your life you must come to. Where you yourself, you decide to change your, your, your experience. I'm tired. I'm tired of being tired. Praise God. I want strength. Praise God. I want happiness. I can't continue like this. 
I can't continue with this sickness. I can't continue with this addiction. I can't continue with this pain. I can't continue with this shame. I can't continue with this loneliness. I'm tired of it. Faith, he said, by faith, he refused anymore to be called whatever they were calling him before. It's like Rahab. They called her prostitute. By faith, she decided to change it and become the mother, the, the, the matriarch of the savior of the world. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes it's not what people call us that is our problem. It is what we call ourselves. It is the voice that we hear inside our head. What is that name that you are being called unconsciously by yourself? You know? I'm not able. You know I'm weak. You know I'm lazy. I'm just a lazy type. I'm stubborn. By faith, you can change that. Amen. By faith, what? You can change that. You can change that. Stop excusing yourself. By faith, you can change that. Oh, oh no, that's how we are in my family. That's not how you are. That's not how you are. Maybe that's how you were. And I will not argue with that, but that's not how you are. By faith, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. That's the same way by faith you decided to become a Christian. You refuse to be a child of the devil anymore. So by faith, you can change anything. By faith, you can change being called depressed. By faith, you can change being called lazy. By faith, you can change anything you don't like about you. Hallelujah. You can change your experience by faith. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise Jesus. Amen. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. It's just like the prodigal son. The Bible says he came to his senses. He was out there, life was tough and he was struggling. Then he came to his senses and said, I'll go back to my father. Amen. I'll go back to my father. Such things should happen to us. We should come to the realization that, you know what now? I want my life to begin to move right. Amen. I want my life to begin to move right. By faith, a man can walk out of a wrong relationship. Yeah. A woman, the same thing. Can walk out. Walk out. Amen. I was speaking with one of the daughters earlier today, and she was uh, telling me, you know, she's getting married, somebody, by the grace of God, of everything that happened that led to her, that's leading to her marriage now. She had to walk out from one to be able to get into another. Better by faith. Amen. By faith. So Moses is here in relationship with Pharaoh's house. Then he decides, you know what? This is the end. I want a relationship with Israel. And sometimes your real journeys in life never start until you are in the right place and in the right relationship. That's what happened to him. When he started taking God seriously, look at what the Bible says in verse 26, uh, from verse 25. He said, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He chose instead to suffer with God's people for a moment rather than keep enjoying Egypt. Can you imagine what would have become of, of Israel if Moses did not step up by faith? I want to call on us. Listen to these brothers. There's a lot attached to your faith walk. If you don't rise by faith, other people will not rise. When you rise, you give others opportunity to rise. Am I talking to somebody now? When you rise, you help other people to rise also. If Moses did not rise, Israel would have stayed in captivity. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In verse 26, he says, Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. So he valued, he esteemed what God had more. 
it's time faith helps us to value what God has. Amen. Faith does what? To value what God has more. We have value for the things of God more than whatever is out there. In verse 27, it says, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Faith helps you to live a life without fear. You're not afraid. Amen. You're not afraid of what men will do to you. You're not afraid of the threatenings of the flesh. You're not afraid because you have faith. He says he was not afraid of Pharaoh, the most powerful king in the world. He was not afraid. Why? Because he had faith. Hallelujah. He had faith. He had faith. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Now, what was the Passover? The Passover was a celebration of them passing over. You see that? And he celebrated it before they even passed over. That is faith. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hello? I don't know if that sings. Imagine if, while you are still single, you start celebrating your wedding anniversary. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Imagine celebrating your anniversary. Say, so oh, this year, this is my first one year anniversary. Is it anniversary of what? My, my, wedding, my, my wedding anniversary. And they're like, I don't understand. Are you married? That's what happened. By faith, he celebrated the Passover before they passed over. That's faith for you. Faith is confident. In our world, people will say you have lost your mind. Faith can be crazy sometimes, but it works. It works. It's like the story of that woman who the doctor said could not have babies. And she went and got a pillow and put it there and would go to work and act as though she's pregnant. Even took the walk, started walking pregnant, like she was pregnant. And would call her colleagues to come and talk to the baby, come and touch my baby. Everybody were looking at her. You've lost your mind. One month passed. Two months passed. Three months passed. Four months passed. She continued doing it. Lo and behold, she was pregnant. Faith, brothers, caused things that be not as what? As though they were. Hallelujah. I want to encourage us to make a list of faith field declarations. Please don't undermine what I'm saying. This is a formula. It works. Think about what areas of my life that are not perfect right now that I need to use faith. If you study the Bible many times, you see people come to Jesus and when they finish with Jesus, do you know what Jesus would say? He would say, your faith has made you whole. So can you imagine now, if we don't have faith, we cannot be made whole. Where is that area of your life that needs wholeness? Now, add faith to it. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, it says, the same gospel was preached to them as well as unto us, but it did not profit them because they did not what? Mix it with faith. They did not add faith. After all of these preachings this month, if you want to see the result, you have to take steps of what? Faith. Steps of faith. Steps of faith. Whatever those steps are, if it's something that is individual, if it's something that has to do with um, not just you, maybe you and your partner, you and your uh, children, whatever it is, steps of faith. You must take actions in line with faith. Amen. You don't have a house yet, but you can start praying for the house now. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, 
you can start looking up and making inquiries about the price of the house. You don't have enough money yet even to take care of yourself the entire month, but you can start looking up what are going to be the requirements. That's faith. Spy the land. Like Moses, he sent the disciples, he sent them, he said, go spy the land. Said, then they went, they, they looked, they looked. It's, ah, it's expensive to buy a house in Canada. Amen. That's what 10 of them said. Two came back, Joshua and Caleb. Said, and Caleb. They came back and said, Ah, if God be with us, we can we will, we will buy a house today. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. Amen. I, you know, if God is with us, we'll do it too. Hallelujah. Listen, there's, there's, there's nothing as beautiful as faith. Amen. Hold hands, pray together. Agree on the matter. Let me say this. Um, sometimes we, 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 money is good and money is important and powerful. But you realize that even the money answers to faith. You don't have to have money first. What you need to have first is what? The faith. Hallelujah. The faith. Amen. Start looking at house designs. Amen. The kind of house if you are the type who wants to build. Start looking at house designs. Amen. Praise God. I love how our brother here always does it, Daniel. He's always going around from car, 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 car maker to car maker. You know, he's moving place to place to see cars. Amen. Praise God. Exposure. Praise God. Go around by faith, by faith. The faith causes things that be not as though they were. Go around. Hold hands and say, Father, thank you for the house that you will give to me. Amen. Praise God. Oh, Father, thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I look forward to the days when I'll be resting and chilling in my own house. Amen. Faith! That's faith for you. I look forward to the days when I'll be moving, collecting rent from my tenants. Yes. <laughs> you know, praise God. When your landlord is coming to collect your own money, don't be angry. Your time will come. Amen. Amen. Don't be angry. What? Your time will come. You will collect too. Amen. You will collect too. Do your thing right now. You will collect too. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You will collect. Oh, glory. Faith causes things that be not as though they were. Faith in prayer prays for things that are not as though they already are. Father, thank you for the first car. Amen. Thank you for the first car. Praise God. Thank you for the first car. Amen. And you are still walking by, with foot, by foot. But no, Father, thank you for the first car. Hallelujah. Amen. We are grateful. Praise God. Woo! So when the first car comes, you are not surprised. Amen. You are not surprised. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It says, by faith, okay, verse 28. It says, through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Verse 29, by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do, we are, we are drowned. Do you see this? So, so there was a difficult situation in front of them. This is the Red Sea. The Bible said they went through the Red Sea as dry ground. Some other people tried the same thing and they did not, it did not work for them. That is faith. Amen. Your case can, becomes different by faith. Hello? Your case becomes different by faith. Don't, don't you dare always think that it's going to be the same thing for everybody. No, not when it comes to you. Amen. You, you will always be an exception. Amen. You will always be an exception. Always. My case will be, will be different. If they say take all right for seven months, eight months, nine months, 12 months, your case doesn't have to be like that. Your case can be different. Amen. Your case can be different. Hallelujah. Your case can be different. Praise Jesus. Your case can be different. Thank you, Jesus. 
He passed through the Red Sea as dry land. Up to this moment, nobody had gone through the Red Sea. It has never happened. It had never happened. And these men just went through it. Ah, they say, no, 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 no. They say in Canada, no, 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 no. Ah, things are tough. Oh, it will not work. Oh, everybody here, they are just suffering. Amen. That's what they say everywhere else. Amen. Praise God. You know, I have to say this. Many, many third world countries have some of the richest men in the world. The same countries where things are bad, it's not bad for everybody. By faith. Amen. By faith. By faith. Last time I made reference to the story of Aliko Dangote. And his encounter without Bishop Benson in the house. By faith. The richest man in, 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 in the whole of Africa now. One man stood up and said, the same way you stood up for me, men will stand up for you. And guess what? God honored it. It was not a case of, is he a Christian or not a Christian? He did something that a Christian did not do. He stood up in the plane himself and asked the secretary to stand up. I'd love to know where that secretary is today. Amen. Secretary stood up and they made space for the men of God. And basically the house had blessed him by faith. And the whole world will stand up for you. Today is the, what? One of the richest men in the whole world. Just opened his refinery. That will make him very rich now, even. About a month ago. Fully functional. The biggest refinery in the whole world. By a black man. Amen. Am I talking to somebody now? And yet in that same place, people will tell you nothing is working. Why? Because it's the same everywhere. But faith can make a clear difference. I'm not talking to somebody. Faith can make a difference. I keep saying this one. When we went to Ukraine, they said nothing was happening there. When I came to Ivano Frank, they said, why are you going to that village? Praise God. Amen. The faith that you have will connect you to your blessing. The faith that you have will connect you to your blessing. By your faith, you shall be made whole in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the walls fell down. Are there things you want to pull down? Are there things you want to change? Are there problems you want solved? Are there things that you want to end? He said, by faith. By faith. There's something happening around you you don't like. Act by faith. Keep acting by faith. You still, you start seeing changes. Things will start changing. Amen. The devil, the devil, the devil, the devil honors faith. The devil does what? The devil honors faith. If you are a man of faith, you are unstoppable. If you decide going forward that you are going to attack, attack and tackle all of those problems by faith, you will not be stopped. Don't, you, don't, don't, don't forget what, what is happening around you. The devil knows faith. Amen. I always like to recount this story I had one time with one deliverance session I was conducting in a psychiatric hospital. One sister lost her mind. Amen. Praise God. One sister lost her mind. One early morning I'm sleeping in my hostel just, and from my bed I hear screaming, shouting. Wait, 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 wait. I wonder what's happening. What's happening? I was in a hostel then. I opened my eyes. I looked through my window. I saw a certain woman. People gathered, students gathered around the gate. A student had lost her mind and she was aggressive, chasing everybody. What is this? I got up, I got dressed. Nobody could come close to her. When I went around her, she would just be quiet. What, what are you doing? I held her. From there, we took her to the psychiatric hospital. 
go to the psychiatric hospital. She was manifesting with everybody else. But whenever I come around, she'll be quiet. So I, was, I said, okay. I'm saying it's because of what I'm saying. Faith, faith, faith. The devil, he, he responds to faith. So I had prepared and cooked something for her, you know, to take to her. Bought some things so she can eat and drink and other things. Even in the midst of everything. And while serving her and doing everything, she would be quiet, normal, behave herself. But there was something I would do. Uh, you know, sometimes in the spiritual realm, you have to conduct spiritual experiments. Amen? Spiritual experiments. I'm not saying, I'm not thinking, and I'm not doing anything. I'm just quiet. She will not do anything. Then I, when I start praying in tongues inside, I'm not saying anything outside. She looks at me. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? She could sense the rising faith. I say this again. The devil, he responds to your faith. Am I talking to somebody? Then I'll be quiet. I'll come. When I start again, she says, what are you doing? They could feel the spiritual energy. Am I talking to somebody now? For we're able to get her delivered and get her out of that hospital. I say this to say the following. I don't know what is happening in your life or around you. Once you start stepping up in faith, things will respond and things will change. Pray in tongues by faith. Even do just faith walk. Just get up. Just walking around. Just walking around by faith. Just pacing around by faith. Just pacing around by faith. Someone like, um, what's his name? Um, Daddy Adeboye does that a lot. It's prayer walk. Do something by faith. Faith is not just words, it's action. That's why when God sometimes tells you, he says, go this way, you go this way. Just that walking around, honoring, doing it in faith, just like that. The Bible says, by faith, the walls of Jericho, what? Fell down. What did they do? They walked around, they just walk. Faith walk, why? Because God had told them to encompass the place. Amen. That, that's where we are, right? Amen. Yeah, verse 30. He said, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. Are there walls you want to bring down? Get to faith. Get to faith. It fell down after they had compassed about it seven days. So for seven days, they just kept walking around. They kept walking around. They kept walking around. They kept walking around. That's all God wanted them to do. Sometimes God just says, walk, walk. Amen. Sometimes God says, call, call. Sometimes God says, text, text. Hello? Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Have faith. Don't let fear cripple you. You know, I, I just shared this testimony. Sister was telling me earlier today. You know, she, 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 she said, she's getting married soon. She said, um, she had just gone out somewhere. And um, so a certain guy just met her. She, she didn't know, obviously, by this time. They were meeting for the first time a few months ago. And the guy looks, and the guy is like, um, heard a voice saying, go and talk to that girl. He heard the voice. He said, go and talk to that girl. So he just said, let, me, let him try. So he went and he said, like, ah, can I get your number, please? She, she straight up said, no. No. I won't tell these guys, just leave me. That's what was going through her head. As she was leaving, going, she heard a voice. Why not give him his own number? So she just called the number out. Not even caring whether the guy got it right and left. They're about to be married now. Amen. They're about to be married now. Faith. Sometimes when they ask for a number, give your number. <laughs> Amen. Give your number. Praise God. <laughs> Faith. No, no, no. This is crucial because um, there are what you call steps or actions of faith. Give your number or collect number. Praise God. Sometimes you hear a voice say call. Sometimes you hear a voice say say. Sometimes you hear a voice say do. Sometimes you hear a voice say just take a walk. Take a walk. You've been in this house for too long. Just walk, walk. Amen. Sometimes just an evening, a simple evening walk around the neighborhood can change a lot. Hallelujah. Just walk. It says by walking what? The walls of Jericho did what? 
Who would have known that walking can bring down walls? Seven days walk of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seven days walls of faith. And by the seventh day, he said they shouted and the walls of Jericho fell down. Thank you, Jesus. I conclude with this one. In verse 31, it says, By faith, the harlot Rahab perished. She perished not uh, with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Hallelujah. She would have been destroyed. But when spies came, she came to their rescue. She accommodated them. She protected. Amen. Praise God. Somebody could have said, you know, uh, uh, if they are God's people, then they should, God should protect them by himself. Abby? They are the ones who, have, who serve a big God. So if they are God's people, why won't God protect them? Sometimes we do not understand our part in ushering. When God gives you an opportunity to be blessed, take advantage of it. Hello? Sometimes God will create a need as though he's the one who is in need, but actually it's because you are in need. Hello? Sometimes God will create a need as if he needs you, but it's because of what he wants to give you, knowing that you are the one in need. Now, this is a woman who had a reputation as a prostitute, Rahab. She was obviously a prostitute and an unmarried woman with no, so to say, concrete life plan for herself. But what she did not know is that God wanted to use her to become the great, great grandmother of Jesus Christ. By that singular action, by faith, of receiving God's people, letting them use her house, letting them stay in her house, just that singular action of saying, okay, you know what? Hide here. Risking everything because she would have been killed if they caught them. She risked everything for them. She saved herself and her generation and became a matriarch such that she's always talked about in the Bible. Faith is what can change our experience. I don't know how things have been. I don't know the mistakes you've made. It can be compensated for if you start work, start working in faith. We no longer think of her today as a prostitute or as one woman who made mistakes. We think of her as the great grandmother of Jesus, the great grandmother of what? David, Amen, and of Jesus. Because she stepped, she took a step of faith. I like us to be on our feet. We're going to pray, Amen. I like us to be on our feet. We're going to pray. I'd like you to take some time now, because I don't want to assume, to talk to God about areas of your life where you want things to change by faith. Amen. Go ahead, talk to God. What is that thing you are believing you would want God um, to come through for, to honor your faith? Go ahead, talk to him, so that it can be unto you according to your faith. Good Father, we thank you. We thank you for every prayer being made now, for every utterance being made for every imagination, for every thought, for everything that every person here is right now considering and connecting to faith. Lord, as a church, I pray on the behalf that you hear them and that you honor it. And Lord, that it shall be to us according to our faiths in these areas. As a church, we see growth by faith. As a church, we see increase by faith. As a church, we see better and favorable conditions by faith. As a church, we see progress by faith. Yes, Lord, we see, we see, we see, we see answers to prayers. We see, oh God, um, um, we see more people. We see, oh God, relationships. 
We see, oh God, marriages and weddings. We see, oh God, children and children. We see, oh God, better jobs. As a church, we are seeing this and more. We are seeing properties. We are seeing, oh God, houses, cars. We are seeing businesses in the name of Jesus Christ. We are seeing increment on every side. As a church, in the name of Jesus Christ, we see peace and love in our homes and in our marriages. We see, oh God, celebrations of life and of love. We see more and more celebrations of, of birthdays and of anniversaries in the name of Jesus Christ. We see life, oh God, and we cancel death in the name of Jesus Christ. We see health, we see wealth, we see goodness in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father, for the wonders are happening, for the goodness is, 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 is manifesting in the name of Jesus. To you be all praise, to you be all glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Can we celebrate God Almighty? Celebrate God Almighty. He's faithful. He is faithful. Thank you so much for your time and thanks for listening. I want to believe you were blessed. Please, I want to encourage us. Again, let's walk by faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. It says we walk by faith and not by sight. Okay? When you leave your walk, or when you leave your house, go by faith, okay? Go by faith. You will not be disappointed, all right? Anything you are doing now that is not perfect, listen. So long as you are going by faith, it will get better, okay? You may be going to a job now that you don't like. Keep going by faith, okay? Things will get better. You, the better job will come, all right? The pay may not be the best. If you keep stepping every day by faith, you'll get a better, a better pay, all right? But every day must be by faith. And it will guide you to the place where God has in store for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, please be encouraged and don't lose heart. And also I want to quickly say we are available. Uh, please reach out to us. We don't know everything. And um, we ourselves are still trying to get used to life and everything. So if, if we don't reach you, you can reach us, okay? Don't hold anything against us. Um, have mercy, all right? It's not intentional, okay? God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we be calm, please, so we can pray, please, all right? All right? Um, and not distract ourselves. Amen. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit. July is our month. Good things will happen to us. Great things shall happen for us. Signs and wonders shall happen through us. Our going out, our coming in is blessed. We increase in every area. We increase in finances. We increase in health. We increase in, 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 in um, our soul also in Jesus' name. Our relationship with God, we increase in it. We know God better. We study his word. We pray in the name of Jesus. We find balance. We find balance and stability in our lives in Jesus' name. Health is in our bloodstream in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for every person, their tithes, their seeds, their offerings, their givings. It is blessed in the name of Jesus. The devourer is rebuked. What they have is secure. The waster will not come near them. The thing that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy will not touch their monies or their resources or their bodies in the name of Jesus. They are protected by reason of their givings in the name of Jesus. As they've given in faith, let it go back to them in good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over in the name of Jesus. May they know more than enough in the name of Jesus. May their storehouse be full all the days of their lives. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen and amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.